Hello and welcome back to Desktop Publishing with Cork Express 2017. My name is Martin Turner and today we're going to be looking at top 10 tips for productivity in Cork Express 2017. Well, um, in reverse order, uh, number 10 is tool tips and tool keys. So if you hover over any of the tools, then up comes the tip that goes with it. And these are just letters which you can press when you're not in a text box and it will go to that tool. So if I want to go to uh, text content tool, I press T and there it goes. So let me do that again. Uh, I'm gonna press T, there it goes. Uh, if I wanna go to the linking tool, uh, N. If I want to go to uh, the picture content tool, R. If I want to go to the rectangular box tool, B. Uh, if I want to go to the line tool, L and so on. And uh, these are incredibly useful. The easiest way to learn them is to just hover over uh, the toolbar uh, and then use the keyboard rather than the mouse. And before you know it, they're completely under your fingers. Many of you will have been doing this for years. If you haven't been doing it, uh, now's a good time to start. Or well, what's next? In number nine position is item styles. So uh, imagine that I am making a uh, box and I want to do it again and again and again in exactly the same way. I'll go to item styles and here's what I made earlier. This is called skew box. So uh, all I've got to do is create a box. Actually we'll do I think for a circle as well. And it won't, it turns it into a box. Um, uh, I can uh, do a picture box. I can do a text box. Here's some text to prove it. And if I then decide that that's not really working for me, uh, I need it to be opaque, I can now just go to uh, box color. Uh, okay, that's not working. There we are. Uh, my trackpad. Um, box color white and make that and there it happens for all those boxes. Well, let's get rid of those. We don't need those. Um, and we'll come down to number eight. Well, number eight is the non-breaking attribute. So when you're working in a long document, uh, quite often uh, you've got hyphenation that you don't want or even words breaking that you don't want. Now, you can for hyphenation, just put a command or control uh, hyphen in there and it will dehyphenate it like that. Um, Let's re remove that. But what happens uh, if uh, for some reason that's gonna work? So let's go here and we're gonna go to uh, attribute. We're gonna change that. I'm gonna style non-breaking attribute over here. And that simply does that. But it doesn't just work for hyphenation. Let's imagine we're gonna break that there. And we're gonna say we want breaking attribute to be uh, kept together. So style again, non-breaking attribute, and there we go. Uh, and uh, these will show up uh, in the view as num breaking. You can turn that off if it's in your way, uh, but it's hugely helpful. And that's a new feature in Quark Express 2017. Well, help search. This is so useful. So if you can't find non breaking attribute, for example, you don't remember it's in style, just simply click on there uh, and you'll see that it's marked up. Now this happens in a lot of different applications. It's not just a Quark Express thing, but uh, it's so easily forgotten. Help in different applications doesn't really work particularly well. In Quark, it really does work. Uh, and when I lose anything, uh, I just go straight there rather than wading through all the documentation. In number six, hyphenation suggestions. So um, imagine I've turned hyphenation off for the entire document. Now, I've got to say that uh, over the years, I've had more arguments with clients about hyphenation than about any other subject. Usually, people don't notice hyphenation in other people's documents, but in their documents, they are uh, furious about it and saying, this is wrong, we don't want this. Now, of course, you know that if you're justifying text and you don't hyphenate it, then it will look uh, particularly bad. And even with ragged right, flush left text, which is either pretty much a standard now for design documents, uh, if the hyphenation isn't there, the, the rag will be way too jagged and it will draw too much attention to itself. 
But uh, if you want it turned off by default, you can still find out what the usual hyphenation is uh, by going uh, over here to uh, Utilities and then uh, Suggested Hyphenation. And that's going to tell me that the suggested hyphenation for suggestions is sug guess tions. And of course, that's language specific. So if you've got a different language turned on, it will give you the hyphenation, hyphenation suggestion for that language. In number five, hotkeys for styles. Uh, let's go back to our Gulliver's Travels. Uh, and uh, previously, I'd gone through with uh, Find and Replace uh, and uh, made all the chapter headings chapters. But imagine for some reason I couldn't do that. For example, in this particular one, uh, the publisher of the reader should be a chapter heading, but it's not got the word chapter in. Let's go to Style Sheets, uh, and uh, we're going to go to Chapter. I'm just going to click on there. I'm going to make add shortcuts. I'm going to say uh, command uh, F1 on a PC. You could do control F1. And I can now just very quickly go through this document. Uh, and uh, every time I get to a chapter heading, um, uh, make that uh, the chapter as it should be. And with a long, complex, and slightly randomly formatted document, using uh, the hotkey, um, so uh, you can see my hand there uh, on there. I just, I just hold my hand on there and click, 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 click. And it goes all the way through. So uh, you can do that for style sheets. You can also do it for item styles. On a Mac, you can also go to preferences uh, and actually change uh, all of the hotkeys, so the key shortcuts. That's really useful. It doesn't work right now on a PC, but Either way, the most useful things is these hotkeys for style sheets where you just zip through the document. Okay, in number four is palette sets. So uh, imagine I'm working on something and it's always the same tools I need, but then I work in something else and it's not. For example, I'm doing a map and I need a particular set of palettes, then I'm doing a novel and I need a different set. Well, let me go to palette sets over here, that's window palette sets, and here's my set for writing a novel. Uh, and up comes my content variables, as you can see over here. Uh, up comes my uh, lists, my uh, style sheets, my page layout, my conditional styles, uh, and so on. So let's just uh, close all those, and we'll do it again. So um, palette sets, novel. Up it's going to come, uh, as you can see it there, straight there. And there we are. You can set different palette sets, you can give them all different names, and it works very well indeed. Right, what's next? Um, well, we've got some palettes up here. What about palette searches? Now, if you've tried this out, you'll be used to the usefulness of it. If you haven't, it might be a new thing. So in all these palettes, you see um, uh, the search feature uh, just up there. Um, and uh, in content variables, you go up there, in uh, different places. So let's look at that again more closely. So you've got a search thing there. So over here, I've got a load of colors which were imported because I was importing uh, graphics, uh, but I don't want them all. Now the organization I'm working for right now is called OM, and I've put the corporate colors in. Uh, and OM blue, OM green, OM gray, OM orange, OM red, OM teal. Um, very, very simple. Uh, likewise, if I'm in my star sheets, I can do uh, title, and everything with title in comes up. This is really useful. Okay, let's go on. Uh, set tool from selected. Let's close a couple of these things. Um, so imagine that I'm, I'm, this is such a useful thing, and I, I only started using it myself quite recently. Um, imagine that I've got a text box, which I, I kind of want to use a lot of. Uh, but every time I create a text box, uh, this is some text. I've got to go in, and I've got to go to the, um, the frame uh, and put that in. Uh, I've, I've, down here, I've got to go to the uh, text box and put that inset in. Well, if I just click back on here uh, and go um, uh, set tool preferences from selected for current layout, then every time I create a text box, uh, it will come up as I want it. And I can just go through there, and while I'm doing that, then I just go straight back uh, to edit, uh, restore tool preferences to default uh, for tool in current layout. And after that, it's not in my way uh, anymore. Uh, it's just back to regular. That is 
a hugely uh, useful function uh, and one which everybody could uh, use more. Well, what is the number one? Um, it's new in Quark Express 2017. If you've been using Quark Express 2017 for a while, you've almost certainly already got into it. But this is phenomenally useful. And it's very simply uh, the fact that I can now use the cursor keys uh, in uh, any dialogue. So I'm, I'm now, uh, let's go there. I'm now down in uh, the text tool here. I can use uh, the cursor keys to just up and down that. So let's just select some text. Uh, see what we're doing. So I've got my back to regular, I just typed in there. I'm going to select it all. I'm going to go down here to uh, the text size. And now uh, using that cursor key, just the up and down arrow, uh, I Yeah, and that applies to uh, any uh, any dialogue where you've got a number. So, if, for example, columns might be less useful. I can increase the number of columns and decrease them. Uh, I can do the same thing for the, uh, for example, the um, uh, the corner. See that happening, and this gives you much more interactivity. Um, so, cursor key implements increments is the number one. Uh, that is by far the most useful uh, new feature uh, for productivity. Uh, it's one I've been using since I, I got the very first copy uh, of Quark Express 2017. If you're not using it yet, do so. Uh, if you are using it, well done. That's all we've got time for this time. Uh, until next time, happy quarter. <laughs>